course, we much rather welcome you right here in our sanctuary, but we are welcoming you wherever you might be this morning. Thank you for being part of the church in the world, outside of our walls. We will begin today with a brief order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is present, who gives life, who calls into existence the things that do not exist. Amen. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, and so we confess. Gracious God, have, have mercy on us. We, we confess that we have turned away from you. Knowingly and unknowingly, we have wandered from your resurrection life. We have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, O God. Give us new hearts and right spirits, that we may find what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house.
He let me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied, as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and they stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy, and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord, when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness in order that you may be feared. I wait for you, O Lord, my soul waits. In your word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who keep watch for the morning, more than those who keep watch for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for the Lord there is steadfast love. With the Lord there is plenteous redemption. For the Lord shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Our second reading is from Romans chapter 5. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through His Spirit that dwells in you. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
Glory to you, O oh Lord. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with the perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he who you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. After having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going to go there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk through the day do not stumble, because they see the light of the world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was called there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary, and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but he was still in the place where Martha had met him. The Jews were there with her in the house, consoling her. And they saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and moved deeply. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could he not have opened the eyes of a blind man and kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that I would believe? If you believed, you would see the glory of God. So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, and I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out with hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him 
and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. Grace, peace, and mercy be to you from your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you ever just spent some time in a graveyard? When I was in college, I took a course that was called Issues in Living and Dying. That course actually required all the students that took it to go spend one hour in a graveyard by themselves. Now, at the age of 22, I had only been to a handful of funerals in my lifetime. And I've only been to a couple of graveyards as well. The truth is, I really didn't want to do this assignment. It kind of sounded creepy to me. Yeah, I had no desire to park my car in the graveyard and walk around by myself for an hour. But I finally did succumb and go do it. I must have spent the first 15 or 20 minutes in the car because all of a sudden I heard a knock on my window, rolled it down, and there was a police officer who asked me why I was in my car in the graveyard. And when I told him what my um, job was, my object for this lesson I had to do, he just smiled at me and said, have oh, a good time. And so after that, I did finally get out of my car and I began wandering around the cemetery. I have to say, it really wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. It was very interesting wandering around the graveyards. I had picked the oldest cemetery in Jacksonville, so a lot of the people were even pre-Civil War that were there. I even made a few etchings of gravestones and wrote some notes about the people that were in the graves there, and just speculating what might their lives have been like. Why did they have their lives cut maybe too short, or how long had one spouse outlived the other? I think what initially bothered me about the graveyard assignment was something that I think bothers most of us, and that's the subject of death. At the age of 22, I didn't even think about death, let alone have any notion that I might someday die. I felt invincible at the time, and so I figured I would live to another forever. Why would I need to even think about death? Death isn't something that most of us like to talk about. We live in a culture that actually values life over death. Our culture encourages us to stay young forever and even try to cheat death at every corner. I've kind of been wondering the last few weeks why COVID-19 hasn't been taken seriously by everyone. Even though the governor here in Wisconsin has finally told us to stay safe at home, I think a lot of people are still thinking this is just a joke or is it important, or I'm not going to catch it, I'm going to be fine, or I'm not a carrier that anyone else can catch it from. Again, I think that some of the problems surrounding people being willing to accept that there is a pandemic out there is that fear about talking about death. People just don't want to take precautions because that might mean they would be vulnerable. Maybe that's why our Old Testament passage from Ezekiel is such a hard one to truly get. Ezekiel was an eccentric Jewish prophet who lived about six centuries before Jesus. The passage told us that one day God suddenly seized Ezekiel and with the help of the Holy Spirit transported him into the valley filled with dry bones. Let me reread to you briefly these first few verses. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It 
In life, bones are the scavenging of, that holds together our bodies. Without bones, we would be nothing more than jellyfish. Bones are also eventually the last record of our death. They're the last thing to disappear into dust. People study bones to determine how long a person lived or when they died. They might even be able to determine then what gender they were, how old they were when they died. Bones are even the universal symbol of death. If you get a poison, you will see on it usually the skull and crossbones. And there was a, host, a very popular headstone graving back in the 18th century that showed that same marking of a cross, bones, and skull. And when bones are discovered in an unlikely place, we immediately suspect foul play. So for Ezekiel, this value that was filled with dry bones was a valley of death. And yet God asked him, mortal, can these bones live? It would only make sense that his answer would be no. Ezekiel is looking at what must have been a great and decisive battle in which many soldiers had died defending Israel. There were bones everywhere, dry and dusty bones, bones that were obviously very dead, clearly beyond revival and resuscitation. But instead of saying no, Ezekiel says, O oh Lord God, you know. And that's when God told Ezekiel to prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. The Lord told Ezekiel that these dry bones are your congregation, that they are your parishioners. He told him to preach my word to them, to tell them this, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you. And you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. And that's exactly what Ezekiel did. He preached to his congregation of the dead, and a miracle began to take place. The dead came to life. The dry bones began to rattle and move about. They began to be joined together, bone to bone, leg bone to hip socket, heart bone to shoulder bone. Tendons and flesh began to appear on those bones, and skin covered them. And then Ezekiel called upon the Holy Spirit to breathe life into the newly formed bodies. And as the passage tells us, I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Out of death, God made life. The valley of the dry bones lived again. The word of the Lord had given them life once again. What was once an image of death now became wonderful. For the people of Israel, Ezekiel's vision was full of hope. It told them that God would be with them, that God would not let them be destroyed, that through God's word, the dead would be made whole again. To us as Christians, Ezekiel's vision is one that evokes images of our own Lord and Savior's death and resurrection. When you look at the cross and what was the symbol of death in Jesus' time, it seems impossible to us that life could come from that. It seems unbelievable that the cross where criminals were hung to die would become for Christians a symbol of life, one that they would wear around their necks. And yet that is where the cross becomes. Out of death, Jesus ex that Jesus experienced on that cross came life. Out of what looked hopeless, God brings new life. And it is through Jesus that we are made whole again. Through Christ's death and resurrection, we get out of the valley of the dry bones and live once again. Now historically, Ezekiel's vision of life being created out of death was one of hope and inspiration. Maybe you've heard of the spiritual dry bones. We're going to play a little bit of that spiritual right now.
being so busy running them around to different events that we lose our own sense of life. We can be like the living dead. We wander around so busy that we forget what day it is, what our names are even. And of course, we all face times when we wonder, how are we going to make it? How are we going to face the road ahead? Maybe it's the death of a loved one. When you lose someone close to you, feelings of sorrow can be overwhelming. Perhaps it's a devastating medical diagnosis. How can you fight this? How can you live with death smacking you in the face? Our lives are filled with valleys full of dry bones. There are times in our lives where everything seems hopeless. Times when we can't imagine that new life can be breathed into us. But it's just at these times that the words of Ezekiel's prophecy are needed. This life is not all that we have. The troubles, the worries, the loss and the pain that we feel in this life will end. It will end because we will live again. Personally, I can't imagine what it would be like not to have Jesus in my life. Not to have his strong arms to lean on. Not to have God's saving grace. It must be awful to lose someone you love, thinking that death is the end. We who have faith have truly been blessed because of the hope that God has given us in Jesus Christ. Out of the dry bones, God may lie. Out of the cross, God may life. Out of our death, God will make life in us again. Because our deaths are not something to be feared. In death, we have been given life. Through Christ, we will live.
God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son and our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Cheer your hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful. We pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of life, bind your faithful people into one body. In light of the church with your spirit, and bless the work of those who work for its renewal. Accomplish your work of salvation in us and through us. For the sake of the world, hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of life, you love the world you have made, and you grieve when creation suffers. Be with us as we self-quarantine during this time of pandemic. Help relieve the anxieties of the unknown. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of life, show redemption to all who watch and wait with eager expectation. Those longing for wars to cease, those waiting for immigration paperwork to finalize, those seeking election, and those in dire need of humanitarian relief, come quickly with your hope. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of life, we give thanks for opportunities for this congregation to collaborate with our community in caring for the needs of our neighbors. Strengthen our ties with other local congregations agencies, and services. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of life, you are our resurrection. We remember all those who have died and trust that, you, that in you they will live again. Breathe new life into our dry bones, that we too might live with you forever. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. According to your steadfast love, O oh God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Holy God, speaking, spoken, and inspired bless you, unbind you, and send you in love and in peace.